The Cold Cut DVD project was a typical example of how an independent label can give you a great opportunity from quite a restrictive brief. Basically, Cold Cut wanted a video for every track. Um, but what happens is, you know, and with most labels, you know, there, there isn't a lot of money bouncing around. And uh, I wanted to create something for them that was doable on the finances that they had available, but also something that gave something back to the directors. There was a fixed amount of money for each track and instead of getting the usual process where you get lots of directors to pitch treatments and then you choose the winning one, we invited a director just like they would be a guest artist on the track. So like you'd invite a vocalist because of their style of vocals. We would invite um, uh, a director because of his work or her work and then make sure that um, we worked with them on their identity to add to the track. Don't think of me as Big Brother. Think of me as the Good Shepherd keeping an eye on my flock. So you've got the lovely cuteness, uh, I don't know if that's a good word, but you know, the, the smuggling peanuts, that collective, it's, it's a very enthusiastic, very, very stylized beautiful, clever, cheeky video and um, that's exactly what I feel that those people are like, you know, they, they, they're really hooked into what's going on but they're very creative and very, very earnest with what they're doing, you know, that, that Smuggling Peanuts video was, was created entirely from hand-drawn images, not, not through the whole computer, you know, the computerised way, if I'm going to use whole word. And then you've got Joel Trussell's amazing um, This Island Earth and his wit and his cheek and he, you know you can see his music likes and dislikes reflected in the type of subjects he's got in the actual video. His comic timing is amazing and, and uh, you can see that coming forward beautifully. We're going to talk about Ninja Tunes um, attitude to things. You've also got uh, technical restrictions as well because they're an independent record label, so they don't have a lot of money to spend on their videos. Um, but what they what it does mean, particularly because they know that a lot of their tracks aren't actually tracks that are going to get daytime play or, or 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 get onto MTV. They're not that kind of music and on a lot of occasions. So they don't want to invest lots of money in a music video because it's not going to get seen that far. And if it does, um, the opportunity they have there is to be a lot more creative with it. A lot of the time the artists don't want to be in the video. And they can be very filmic, they can push the boat out, and they can generally do subjects that, that are banned on mainstream television. So you've got a really great opportunity to push the boat out, do something interesting and different and not have to work under the usual commercial restrictions. Another really great idea that was very simple but beautifully done is Wolf Wan Bao's video for Cold Cut, A Whistle and a Prayer. He used Fuzzy Felt and took Fuzzy Felt to a whole new dimension. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible the different journeys that you go on within that video. And he had a hard task because the other thing is with music videos is you've got to remember that, you know, anything, we generally don't commission things. You, you try and commission a video that's about three minutes, three and a half minutes, because it keeps it tight. And I think that um, Whistle and a Prayer video definitely hits about five minutes or four minutes and he takes you through all these different worlds and then he starts using, he goes into this really abstract landscape and starts using this fuzzy felt in a mad sort of stop frame way and it's beautiful and, and, and finishes it all up with some live action at the end that you don't expect and um, that one is another idea of something that he's done himself and worked it really, really well just through keeping the idea going and expanding on it all the way. That's the thing. I think a lot of video directors make the mistake where they think, oh, I've got a great idea, we're going to shoot it and it's going to look amazing and it's going to look like this. And you've got to remember that after the first ooh, 10 seconds, you go, oh, I get it, oh, that looks wicked, that's a really great style or concept. Now what are you going to do with it? What's going to happen next? You've got to keep 
expanding and, and, and keep people's interest in it. I would recommend looking to ind smaller independent labels if you want to really build up your showreel and you want to get out some really mad ideas that are doable on the money. Obviously, you've just got to be so careful about that. Um, it's the best way forward, yes. And then you can always progress and expand. And a lot of successful directors will do the odd video for, for an independent just to you know, get creative again. Taskmaster burst the bionic zit splitter. Break next speed, we drown ten pints of bitter. We lean all day, and some say they ain't productive. Could that depend upon the demon that you're stuck with? Cause right now, I see clearer than most. I sit here contented with this cheese on toast. I feel the pain of a third world famine. Said way, we count them blessings and keep jamming. We were very lucky to have Matt Kirkby do the witness video, although he was actually on the rise at that point. Um, but although, you know, it was a larger budget than other videos uh, and it, it did involve a few locations but you can see that he worked it out that it was handheld camera and it, it, he, he edited it beautifully he worked it all out in advance and and um, it was a killer idea it really was brilliant he, he has worked that particular video out to, to hit a certain budget. It doesn't have to look high budget to be very successful and brilliant and entertaining. <laughs> Another bit of advice I'd like to say to new directors is to remember that I'm not your yes man. There's a lot of that around with your friends and people that you know. You know, no offence to people, but you, you, a lot of people don't like to upset anyone. Whereas the commissioner, they've got to get that video in and it's got to look right. So they're the ones to show various, what do you think of this, and bounce ideas off. And they can, they'll give you an honest opinion back because they've got nothing to gain by being nicey-nicey with the director. They want to make it work for you. So use them as your soundboard. They're very valuable um, people for that fact. And um, the more you work with them like that, the more they'll feel like they've got a great dialogue going with you and they'll want to use you again, hopefully, if it all goes well.